Glorious Congregational. Glorious. Uh, can we bow our heads for a minute of prayer? <laughs> Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you again asking you for healing for those affected from the COVID pandemic. We ask for healing for those who have been directly affected and ill. We pray for those who have ongoing health issues from it. And we especially pray for those who have passed and the families of those who suffer those losses. Continue to work with our medical fields to get an answer for this. Continue to work with those people to get the results that we need so that we can continue to serve you. In your name we pray. Amen. Our morning announcements. Um, the flowers to my right are in memory of <coughs> Lorna Schulte. So you're aware of that. Reads Across America uh, will happen next Saturday at 12 o'clock. Um, Soon you, would you like to say anything? I hope everybody saw the cake. Yes, yes. I hope we are so happy. And we're already still getting donations for next year. Great. So everything is up and moving. Anybody who can come up and help with yes. these, we will be welcome and love to have you. It would be great. We've got a short program, but we're going to have some refreshments out there. And, you know, everybody, it's going to be cold, so have a lot. <laughs> we'll have a good time. So. I invite our congregation to be a welcoming congregation that day as our church is right here connected to the cemetery. And 12 o'clock on Saturday. Okay, we look forward to that. And then next Sunday, you're all going to want to be here because it's the Sunday school pageant next Sunday. So please make sure that you're here to see those kiddos. They've been working hard on the program. Uh, please come there to come and support them. Today is birthday Sunday, so anyone with a birthday in December. And somebody has there. one today. What's that? Somebody has one today. Somebody has one today. today. Thank you. 
We light the candles of hope, peace, and joy today. Hope, peace, and joy are the Lord and the of us and the world. As Christians, we hold our hope in Jesus Christ, Emmanuel, God with us. As followers, we cherish our peace in Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace. As believers, we know our joy is deep and true in Jesus Christ, Savior of the world. There is a song in the air. This song is filled with hope, peace, and joy. We rejoice in this light. Please rise as you are able for our first hymn. There is a song in the air. Understand anew how free we are from sin, 
Because when we confess, we understand what our Lord and Savior did on that cross. He's sending us to salvation forever. And that, that, that is celebration. That is joy. For those who've repented, hallelujah. Your sins are no more. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our beautiful choir anthem this morning may sound a little unusual until Candy represents some scripture for us that sets snowfall from life.
was an aquarium. And when we hold it on Christmas Day, I got an aquarium. And I was happy. I got an aquarium. This big thing, and my fish would be happy. I was so excited. And I started to fill my aquarium. And this is where you really all need to be paying attention. I'm fixing my mask. I started to fill my aquarium in the bathtub. You're hearing laughter, but I was soon crying because I broke my aquarium. I was happy to have my aquarium, and then my aquarium broke and I was sad. Happiness is something that happens in the moment. It's like, oh, I'm happy, I'm happy, I'm happy. Joy, and that's what we're talking about this morning, everybody. Joy is something deeper. Joy is Christmas itself. Joy is knowing that you have your family with you. And though sometimes things are great, and sometimes things break, joy never leaves us. And what we're going to be talking about this morning, all children of God, is something I'm not sure you're all aware of, which is how we can choose joy. We can choose to be joyful. Let's listen to how we can choose to be joyful, because we can choose God to be with us, because God, during Advent, chose to be with us. Because God is with us, we can be with God. Holy and gracious God, things do break. Happiness fades, tears fall. But you, God, are with us. And as Christmas continues to be understood through the young and young at heart, help us understand that joy is something we choose when we look to the cross and the cradle. In the name we pray. Amen. Our scripture today is from James 1, 1 8, and 12 through 18. Greetings from James. This letter is from James, the slave of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. I am writing to the 12 tribes, Jewish believers scattered abroad. Greetings, faith, and endurance. Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow, for when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. If you need wisdom, ask our generous God, and he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for your asking. But when you ask him, be sure that your faith is in God alone. Do not waver, for a person with divided loyalty is as unsettled as a wave of the sea that is blown and tossed by the wind. Such people should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Their loyalty is divided between God and the world, and they are unstable in everything they do. God blesses those who patiently endure testing and temptation. Afterward, they will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. And remember, when you are being tempted, do not say, God is tempting me. God is never tempted to do wrong, and he never tempts anyone else. Temptation comes from our own desires, which can entice us and drag us away. These desires give birth to sinful actions, and when sin is allowed to grow, it gives birth to death. So don't be misled, my dear brothers and sisters, and join with me in the last two verses. Whatever is said and heard is a gift coming down to us from God our God, who created all the lights and the heavens. He never changes or casts a shifting shadow. He chose to give birth to us by giving us his true word, and we, from the law of creation, became his prize possession. Please join me in this prayer. Dear Lord, when troubles of any kind come our way, help us consider these trials as an opportunity to prepare. 
take this 10 second quiz. How would you respond to the following three amendments? You have a flat tire on your way home from work. You're experiencing family betrayal. You received a discouraging health report. Now, if you're honest with yourself and you're thinking about the reactions to these three events, you're probably going to say, well, it depends. It depends. It depends on what? It depends on how, when, and where, and why we choose joy. Now, I think these two words together are a bit of a quagmire for us because I don't think we're taught to choose joy. We'll want to choose joy. Okay, folks, here's an easier quiz than the first one. Do you want to choose joy or do you want to choose victory? Do you want to choose joy or do you want to choose. I'm going to have to do it in three. I can make it. No pressure. Do you want to choose joy or do you want to choose upset? Right? Easiest quiz you'll ever get from me. Joy. Joy. We want to choose joy. We don't always. Thank you. I love this. I love that it's organic, sermon. I love that it is responsive, the message itself. No, we don't always choose joy. We're going to get there. Um, I thank you for that. But we want to choose joy. But do we always choose joy? Here's the thing, folks. I shared last week that I've enjoyed looking at the specific words of the candle that we've been lighting during the Advent season. And it has been amazingly rewarding, and I hope that experience is passing itself along to you. We lit the candle of hope on the first Sunday. We lit the candle of peace this past Sunday. Now we're lighting the candle of joy. And as a Deep, as I delve deeper into these significant words, I think there's something really important that's happening called sequence. If you research Advent candles, you'll notice something. Different colors, different words, different sequence. It's all good. But the alignment that we have is important because it's not right or wrong. I share with you when we lit the hope candle that we had hope because it's something that we can't see, it's a vision beyond us. I've said something you've said in your own head, I may use just slightly different words. But when you have hope, it's not hope in the now, it's hope in what? What's coming? Um, Flat tire. Option number one is posted on the quiz. What do you have? Hope that either one, you can fix it yourself, or two, someone will come along and rescue you. You have hope. Is that hope in the moment when, you're, when your white knuckles safely off the road? It's futuristic thinking. Hope is in the future. I love this candle lit first. The second candle. Oh my gosh, really? Oh, please, what? I can barely get peace between my own ears. You want me to get peace around the world? Yes. Yes. How do we get peace in the world between our ears and in the world around us? We turn to our Savior. Our Savior gives us hope. Our Savior gives us peace. And beautifully, beautiful people who think, our Savior gives us joy. And joy is something that we can choose. The Lexham Bible Dictionary, which is a supplemental guide to scripture, and that's a little scholarly, I don't mean to, but there's an important thing that the Lexham Bible Dictionary shares. It's a step further into the children's room. This dictionary distinguishes joy from happiness. The contributors classify joy as a state of being. Happiness isn't. <coughs> Happiness is feeding. Happiness is fickle. Happiness is a fourth grader in tears because what he was happy about suddenly changed. Whereas joy is 
D. Joy is unwavering. Joy is unshakable. You waver. Yes. You shake. Yes. You tremble. Yes. Yes. We're a little bit old. But Christ is in it. So as we prepare for the coming of our Lord and Savior, we need to understand that in order for us, here's the, here's the crux of the message. Bing, bing, bing. If we are to choose joy, we have the understanding that Christ is always with us. Our joy is in Christ. Our joy is in Christ, not in the aquarium. Our joy is in Christ, not in that relationship. Our joy is in Christ, not in that level of success that we think we want. Our joy is in Christ, not in the imperfect Christmas photo that you wish you could somehow change so that the world could see you as joyful, peaceful, and joyful. We are joyful because Christ chose us. We are joyful because we choose Christ. When we give off self and unto Savior, whoo, when we give off a focus, a narrowing, a microcosm, and we all do this, folks. We all do this. We fall into this minutia. Then choosing joy is Something we may, we may want to do, but Ellen, you said it's so prescient. You were so prescient when you said we don't always choose joy. I didn't hear you, Gina. Hold on. But if you understand in your moment that you have an option, and your option is that you can choose joy because God chose you. Then the situation itself, while still pressing or squishy or ugly or hard, changes. It changes. Gina, no, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. I'm just saying that joy is an attitude. Joy is an attitude? Joy is an attitude. It's something that doesn't waver. Let me get to the first two point. Thank you, Kat. It is an attitude. It's a discipline. Well, that's weird. What did you just say, Megan? You? Because I kind of was thinking about my Christmas cookie this afternoon. <laughs> Who doesn't love Christmas cookies? Hey, and you, you just said joy is a discipline. Shouldn't joy be easy? Ah, joy, roller coaster, woo! Fun, present, me, yeah. That's what I wanted. I need calendar. Joy is a discipline. I get it. You know, I, I love you guys. You're like this. It's wonderful to preach to you because you're like with me. Awesome. Um, first Thessalonians. Thank you. Rejoice always. Full stop. Full stop. What? What? I have a flat tire. There's somebody in my family who's dying somebody else's back. Betrayal. What? Did you just hear what that medical professional said? Ah! Rejoice always? Not diggity. Now you're understanding, at least in part, in the moment, that joy is a discipline, it's an attitude, it's a way of living, it's a way of intentionally focusing on what is. And what is, is the flat tire, is the family betrayal, is the health report, is the heart news. Yes. It's also that God chose you. And you can choose God. And when you choose God, here we go. Pray without ceasing and give thanks in all the circumstances. Again, both stop on the first two words. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing and give thanks in all circumstances. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. The theology of our Advent season this year has been interesting to me insightful to me, and I hope it's been interesting and insightful to you as well. Because there's a couple words here that kind of, and Craig catches things too. I love this, Craig. What does this mean? Um, I'm on the fourth one. 
And we're grateful that we can all see the same screens. Thank you, technology. Um, let me just back up to the second half of that. I'm on the third line for this. That's where I'm going to start. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. The will of God in Christ Jesus. That's theologically related. Did you know this? I mean, we can skip over those words because we know what they mean. I mean, we read that, right? Oh, and speaking of readers, can I do this now, Craig? Do I have your nod? Ryan, you're hired. <laughs> Who else besides Craig and I are like, what a voice here? <laughs> Sorry, tangent. ADD. Coming back. All right. The will of God in Christ Jesus. Think about that. The will of God. What did God do? He sent himself. He sent himself, not for God. <laughs> no, 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 God is one. We were talking about this in the first sermon of this season. God is three in one. Hope. Eternal Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Son. God. We've talked about this, David Schultz. The will of God in Christ. He did this earth. He did this Bethlehem. He did this message not for God. He did this for you. He wanted you. God wanted you to understand that he's choosing you. And that we can choose him back. And it is an attitude. It is a discipline of joy. Let's move on because there's a great scripture. Let's go to number two. Always be full of joy in the Lord. I say it again. Rejoice. Philippians 4.4. 4. Um, quick Bible question. Philippians is written by the Apostle Paul. Thank you, Apostle. The Apostle Paul is in prison when he writes this. Well, here's that word again. I said, I think I've said it at least twice. Here it is again. Hot diggity. Rejoice. Always. Full of joy in the Lord. He's in prison. All of us in some capacity, whether we're acknowledging it or not, are in some kind of jail. We bust out of it. But there's always something hard around you. Have you noticed? There's always something there. You can step out of it. You can choose joy. Amen, that you do. Now you've noticed that, right? Like, for example, I chose joy on Monday, so therefore I assume that Tuesday will be just as joyful as Monday. Right? Wrong. Wrong. Always be full of joy in the Lord. I say it again, rejoice. If we start to make this a habit, Ugh. sounds like work. If we start to make this a habit, the work of joy spreads. Number three. I have told you these things so that you will be filled with my joy. Yes, your joy will overflow. Jesus Christ, in this unusual liturgy, for Advent has been speaking to you. I didn't talk this Advent about Mary. I talked with you about what Jesus is saying. What Jesus is saying, what Jesus is making poignantly clear in your life now, 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 is that you can choose to join him. How? A friend said, how do I choose to be joyful? So here's the how-to part. How do I choose to be joyful? There's an understanding that we need to grasp here theologically. He entered the world. Advent, Christmas, the birth of the baby. He's coming back. If you're buying into the first half of this story, Christmas, birth of the baby of the star, then you should find the second half of this story that he's returned. And our joy is in waiting for his return. That's our joy. It's in waiting. There are 400 years between the end of the Old Testament and the beginning of the New Testament. For 400 years, people were living in a place of in-between. We are also living in a place of in-between. It's in between. We're in between times. Yes, there's some of us that are hard. Yes, there's some of us that are happy. But we can choose joy because we know our Savior is coming again. Christmas isn't past tense. Christmas is forward tense, future tense. 
He's coming again. Hallelujah, folks. Hallelujah. We don't have to look at the situation in front of us. We can look at Christ within us. We don't have to look at the situation in front of us. We can look at Christ within us. And when we look at Christ within us, hallelujah, you're going to have what? Joy. What does the world mean? Joy. What can you give the world? Joy. Give the world joy. Choose it. Attitude, discipline, acceptance, habit, abundance, joy. Amen? Amen. Joy to the world. Number 92. As you're able, please rise. I'm going to take, I'm stealing Robert's line. Sing with gusto.
Monday through Sunday to so for all the prayers. And uh, our family friend Linda is still on the ventilator for COVID, but she is responding wonderfully. Her numbers are up, so join in. Thank you. Um, I was talking about her dad, Bill, and Linda, who I mean, she's mentioned before. Thank you, Patty. Uh, great. Missy had a little bit of a scare this past week, but amen, she's doing fine. Missy had a little bit of a scare this week. Missy, her daughter, pregnant. Missy, um, I'm a leader. God is good. Another joy. Thank you. Uh, prayers. Prayer, 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 prayer. I don't know where to start. Um, I'll start with what I received through message. And it's kind of neat because I'm going to put this with brackish water, salt, and fresh. Because it's hard. But it's also, the news is hard. But it's also being received with really hope. Cool. Linda Lindsay has sent us a message. Linda Lindsay's cancer is back. Linda has been through this journey before, has had a vasectomy. That may be too much TMI, Linda, so you can throw something at me later. But anticipated not having this. And it's here. Now, I shared that and this is a special from our joys because of Craig Stout, whom she mentions. She's echoing Craig's anthem, his hymn, because he lives, I can face to one. So we surround Linda at this time with our love, our prayers, and as much support as God will put on our hearts to deliver her. So, prayers to Linda. Our prayer chain this week, Sandy Tingley has got good news that the procedure, I'll just, can I do that? I'll just, Sandy, I spoke with her briefly. Um, Sandy has done all the procedure and is looking forward to better, brighter days ahead. Thank you for your prayer. Um, Kenny, there you are. Kenny Wayne, how's your husband Wayne? <coughs> he seems fine. He seems like he has a little bit of a cold, but it had lagged on for a few weeks. And we went to the doctor, and the doctor said he believes that we have COPD. Which I can't really have right at the present time, but sure. his blood pressure was sky high, like 210 over 80 something. Uh, so it has a couple of issues. Sure. So we have a chest x ray, we don't know the results of yet. Um, he goes back for blood work next week, and then we see the doctor on December 23rd. First to wait. Okay, so we're in the discernment learning process. Yeah. Thank you, Kim. Thanks for putting your husband Wayne on our prayer. Any other prayers? Sandy. Sandy, we have back to the Maryland, Maryland. They're taking Brianna back to Baltimore, Maryland. For what does that mean? So what does that, thank you, Kim. What does that mean? She's been in Rochester. She's been in Baltimore twice. She's been in Sarah. They can't find Maryland. Okay, thank you, Sandy. More continued prayers for Brianna and her disorder. Prayers for Tim Gardner. Um, back in October, he started getting a rash, and it spread to now. Um, they're going back to Allentown on Monday to find out the test results. But literally, from head to toe, his skin is just burning off his body. And they think it's autoimmune, but they're not sure. So, prayers for Anthony. Lots of lots of prayers for Tim Gardner. Thank you, Tim Gardner. Thank you. Prayers for tornado victims. Yes. Thank you. Tornado victims. Thank you, Betty Lou. My mother was called by ambulance last night. Her issue is her mobility. And uh, 9 o'clock last night, there's Gus in my mom's driveway, along with an amazing medical crew. So anyone who's associated with any EMS, amen. Wow, good, amazing, prompt care. Uh, my mom is also in the discernment process. This is her leg is numb, and it's causing her to uh, not move well. So we're not sure what that means. She has had surgery. Um, we're not sure. So would you please keep my mom and all of us on that side of the mountain in your prayers, Candy? And where is she now? She's in um, uh, Madras. She's in Thank you. Any other prayers, Gina? Cheryl? Yes. Um, she's 65. She's in ICU. Um, the doctors have told her family to prepare for the worst. Okay. First for Cheryl. Thank you. Thank you. 
Does it? Or Kathy? Uh, prayers for my sister, Bobby. She is um, C-I-D-P, which is something that impacts your nervous system. And she uh, is now in, she can't move. She has no, she can't walk or anything. So she's been in the hospital this week, and they moved the her as a guest. And uh, she needs her prayers. She does. Uh, prayers for your sister, Bobby. Uh, it's our place for her. Chris. Prayers for my older son, Chris, and his nine month old baby, Fallon, who are home with COVID. Okay, Chris, Fallon, And one more. Yep. Two more. Yep. Prayers for Catherine. Uh, she was told last year that she was. Would never be able to get pregnant, and four months later, of course, she was pregnant. And the pregnancy has gone well, except she and her husband did get COVID um, um, shortly before Thanksgiving. Yesterday, I went to her baby shower, everything was good to go. But I did find out that, you know, she wasn't supposed to have this baby. So it truly is a blessing. Yeah. Um, and her mother, Charlene. Yeah. <laughs> um, has had cancer spots on her kidney before, so she's stopping for that and for breast cancer. And she also, along with her twin sister, had glaucoma in their one eye. They both teach school. They have not gotten vaccinated because the doctors say we don't know what it'll do to the glaucoma. Okay. Um, so, Charlene is on the fence. She feel, she's going to get vaccinated a couple times and she gets scared because her doctors sure. are telling her no. Yeah. Now one of them is telling her yes. Give her guidance. Got it. Thank you, Pam. Guidance to Charlene. And continue first to Catherine, who is expecting. Hello, Missy. Let us, let us be quiet. Let us find peace and hope and joy. Together in this space of sanctuary and in anticipation of our King. So, just a moment of silence, and then we'll move forward. A lot of words came. Let's just be still. Cheryl, I see you. 
Let your angels of mercy and grace surround her and her family. We pray for Kathy's sister, Bonnie, with CIPD and the mysteries we don't understand. We pray for Craig's son, Chris, and nine month old Bonnie, Chris's daughter, with COVID. We pray for Catherine and her pregnancy. We pray for her mom, Charlene, who has issues with decisions that you can answer when she turns to you. We pray for my mom and my family in this day and the struggles and the situations that we all have, Lord. And we just keep recognizing that, yeah, it's messy. Yes, it's great. It's hard. But there's joy because we know that you came as a Savior and you will come again as our Savior. And we wait and we smile. And we laugh. And yes, while Aquarians break, our hearts are busting with joy for you. And with a new meaning, a new nuance, we share this prayer, this one that you taught us, when in harmony we say with joy, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. We ask, Lord, that you continue to teach us and reach us through our wallets, 
and through the ways we reach you and teach about you. Because it's not just what we say, it's what we do. And we ask, Lord, that these gifts that you that you've been blessed with from a grateful people continue to inspire, infuse, and liberate a world that needs your joy. To those who have given greatly, amen. To those who are continuing to struggle to give, amen, or your gift is in giving. Thank you, Lord, for what we have. Light, warmth, hope, peace, joy, love, Christ at the center, the candle of light, Christmas Eve. And together, with joy, we said, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Nancy and Our benediction.